Welcome back everyone. Well, President Trump is set to visit the coastal bend today. He will be stopping by the communities affected by Hurricane Harvey's deadly wake. We do have Congressman Blake Farenthal joining us this morning here on First Edition uh, and has been a frequent guest now in these past couple of days. Unfortunately, when we are coming to you, uh, we're looking to see what is going to be the next step and that's a big question to answer. Well, you know, getting President Trump down here, I think, is important because it's going to let him see with his own eyes the devastation we've suffered. What I'm afraid is going to happen with Houston in the headlines and all the dramatic rescues, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the damaged areas we have, specifically Port Aransas, Aransas Pass, Rockport, uh, are already starting to fall off the national radar. But right. President Trump's a builder. He'll understand uh, the devastation that we face. And uh, we, we want to be uh, top of mind. Uh, when we're asking for things for the federal government. There's stuff we still need now from the federal government. We still need uh, food and water in some areas. We've got to get the Army Corps of Engineers back into the port to uh, survey it to make sure it's safe so we can get the ships going mm -hmm. and the refineries running again. Definitely. I saw something about 10% of our oil production right now is uh, being shut down. Those those refineries are shut down. How is that expected to impact us these next well, months? Well, if they get back online soon, it won't be a serious impact. But if there's a delays in getting it on, we're going to see increased gasoline prices at the pump. What have your conversations been like with folks there at the White House and just other um, uh, federal officials. Everybody I've talked to has uh, expressed their commitment to get the job done, but this is a Herculean task because there hasn't been a storm like this uh, ever. Mm -hmm. uh, usually they just come through and uh, are gone, but now you've got Harvey that's just kind of hanging here, bringing all sorts of torrential rain uh, in Houston. You know, we thought we had it bad, but Houston is really is. is is getting they're still doing there. active rescues at this time. They're they are. The Cajun Navy, a, a friend of mine, a congressman from uh, Louisiana, helped mobilize that. Uh, they brought hundreds of boats in from Louisiana to help people. It, it's a it's a bad situation. Another headline that's making rounds this morning has been, what about insurance coverage? Can you speak a little bit about that and what people can expect? What message do you have for folks? Well, it, it's time to start filing your insurance claims. If you don't have insurance or you're uh, in need of emergency help from FEMA, uh, they're there. They can provide hotel vouchers for you uh, for the short term and then in the long term look to getting you into uh, rental properties. And it, things are really opening up now. You, we used to have the day of the FEMA trailer. Uh, now they do sometimes offer manufactured housing, but they're opening up to uh, hotel vouchers or uh, Airbnb. So there are all sorts of options uh, for you. And it's uh, disasterrecovery.gov is the uh, website you can go to uh, to get in line. Because uh, these counties, most of the counties in the viewing area have been declared federal disaster area, that individual assistance is available uh, for FEMA. So you've got, you know, we ought to be able to get a roof over your head in very short order. All right, disasterrecovery.org is where you... .gov. .gov, you're right, .gov. Disasterrecovery.gov, that's where uh, we're going to be uh, posting that also on our social media for, if it's not already there, I'm sure it is. Uh, we have a great media team that's yep. been behind us. Um, and also, there's there any talks on once things get back to normal, any legislation that might be, you think might be talked about now with hurricane insurance and then also just uh, relief efforts? Well, we've what do you have we, uh, it, it's pretty clear with Houston. We've exhausted the funds that have already been appropriated for disaster relief nationwide. Mm -hmm. So FEMA, I'm sure, will be coming to Congress almost immediately uh, asking for a supplemental appropriation to uh, to deal with the disaster assistance. We're already debating the National Flood Insurance Program and how to put that on a more financial gra uh, financially sound footing. Mm -hmm. uh, what's happening in Houston is going to put a huge strain on the National Flood Insurance Program and that's going to be a, a real challenge in how you provide that flood insurance without increasing the premiums uh, substantially for folks in uh, flood prone areas. And Yes, that makes some degree of sense, but if you built there thinking you weren't in a flood prone area and there are new maps, or if you're somebody on a fixed income, you, we got some real challenges in addressing. Uh, we're going to keep up. We're going to keep up with you and Congress with uh, the work that you have ahead. That's a lot, and we do appreciate your time being here to speak with us one on one because we do know you have a very busy agenda, especially with the president uh, making an arrival here. 
Yeah. Will you be meeting up with him uh, specifically? Th that's the plan. They've told us to be flexible in okay. uh, the schedule today. I don't know if you followed the president, but he's usually late. <laughs> All right. Well, so am I. <laughs> Here we go. Thank you so much, Congressman, for being here.